Okay, hi everyone. So today we're going to be continuing our discussion on methods. So part two of two parts on methods. Um, and you can find a little bit more about methods in chapter six of the beginning Java 8 fundamentals book. There are links right here and there to the ebook in the York U library accessible to York U students. All right. So once again, when we're talking about object oriented programming in uh, Java, and similar languages, we have a class, we will call this class C, and inside of that class, which is a blueprint for the objects that we'll be creating from that class, we can have definitions of, of blocks of code called uh, methods, and here we're referring to methods as M. So we reuse these code blocks, these methods, these basically functions um, that we're calling M, by, by instantiating or creating objects from the blueprints, from the classes. So for each method call, we would do something like this, where the object has been created from the class, and then we have a dot, and then we call the method name right there, and then we have parentheses beside it, and then there's going to be some stuff inside of the, the parentheses, the, the arguments for the... Um, for, for the um, for the method now so object is the context object of, of type C or the class comes from the class M is the method defined in class C and we are going to try and get some action to come out of the call to this method so there would be for instance right here we have a method called get older you can see right here and we have it here as well and there's this dot right here and a dot right there. And what you find on the left hand side of the dot is the name Jim, which is an object. And we have another uh, object called Jonathan. And so we're applying this action, get older, there and there, to each of these objects. And depending on, on who these objects are, what these objects are, the response from the action uh, call, get older, in both cases, may be different. Um, often it is different. As well, we could have uh, two different objects called P1 and P2, and we tell it, both of these objects to move in a particular direction using the move up method, the move up function, okay? And we separate out the object name right there from the action that's supposed to be taken using that dot. So all objects of class C share the same definition of the method. So when we create the classes, the blueprints, the blueprint will be the same no matter which object was created from that blueprint. The blueprint is always the same. However, each object may have distinct attribute values. So when I, for instance, ask for how, you know, so, or say that Jim needs to get older and Jonathan needs to get older, well, if Jim was already 50 years old, and then we apply this get older um, method to Jim, then Jim would become 51, for instance. But if Jonathan was, say, 60 years old, and we apply the get older, then Jonathan would become 51 years old. Jonathan would become 61 years old. So the, the sort of the baseline before you, you apply your method or your action could be different. Each could have distinct attribute values each object could have distinct attribute values. So applying the same definition of a method may have distinct effects. One would age, for instance, if we're talking about Jim and Jonathan, one of them would age differently to a different value than the other one would. All right. So we've also been talking about constructors. Constructors can have or are, are, have the same name as the class, all right, but they don't have any return type. They are used for initialization of the attributes of the particular objects that we're, we're creating. They're uh, called using the new keyword. So here's an example right here. We have a class called person. We're going to instantiate or create an object called Jim. So we have this equal sign right here. Okay, that's the assignment operator. And so what we're saying is we're going to create a person named Jim. Over on the right hand side, we have the constructor right here. The name of the class is right there. We use the new keyword to say we're going to be using the constructor. And then we have those attributes, 50 and British, so age and nationality, that are being used um, in the constructor itself. OK, 
okay we can also have um, mutators and mutators okay are ways of changing or reassigning the attributes inside of a, an object so we have an attribute 50 we have another one called British if we wanted to change the nationality or the age we would use mutators basically we could call these like changers or whatever mutators sounds like some Marvel action movie thing okay but basically we're going to allow the uh, the attributes to be changed they don't have a return type or sorry they have a void return type okay so we're not returning anything when we when we mutate uh, an object and uh, they can't be used when a value is expected to be returned okay so for instance um, if we were to say this by itself that'd be fine okay Jim dot set height uh, to 78.5 inches or centimeters or something but if we say that we want to return something back from the method okay then that wouldn't be allowed because the method the mutator okay remember that mutators are methods okay because we're talking about methods right now um, if it was returning anything that that wouldn't be that wouldn't be good okay so it wouldn't really be a mutator in that case on the other hand accessors okay are a different type of of, uh, of method and we, we use attributes for internal computations okay and and generally we're not changing uh, the, the values of the attributes when we're doing that okay we, that's not what's supposed to be we're just supposed to access the attributes okay make some some calculations and then return something back so we uh, we have return types okay so in this case up here you saw return Okay, so we wanted to return something from the method. Okay, so, so typically, basically, if you're going to use an accessor, it means that you don't want to have a void return value, you, which is nothing. You want to have something substantial be, being returned. Okay, so you have an explicit return statement, typically at the end of the method, although it doesn't have to be. There, there are example cases or usage cases where you wouldn't have it at the end. You'd have it somewhere in between or in the middle. And it will return the computation result to... Um, for the, the method being used, okay, for the accessor method being used. So for instance, uh, and, and typically you you know that you're using an accessor because in Java you'll often see that the name of the method starts with the word get, okay? So here we're saying that we have an object called Jim. There's the dot right there, your dot notation. We say we want to get the body mass index. Um, and so, so you say get BMI and it will return a BMI value. BMI itself is not one of the attributes, okay, uh, of the uh, uh, of the object, okay, but it will be made up of the attributes, okay. The calculations inside will be will be run. Well, it wouldn't be British. It would be sort of um, it'd be the the mass and the height of the of the person um, would be used to get the BMI, and we return it after calculation for BMI. Okay. You also see it when um, for instance, if you have a print line or a system dot out dot print line, and then in the parentheses, like this, you do a object dot and the method, and that will be printed, okay, like that. So you can use them sort of in a case like this, but you can also use them inside of the arguments for for other uh, for other um, methods. All right. So the dot notation is a binary operator. It's found uh, in the middle of two things. On the left-hand side of the dot will be an object. On the right-hand side will be an attribute or a method. So, given a variable of some reference type that isn't null, we use the dot to retrieve, say, attributes. So, it's analogous to the um, to this symbol right here, okay? So, basically, it's that sort of single quote right there. And so, if you say, um, so, if you say Michael's um, hair color. Okay, that'd be sort of like saying Michael dot get hair color. Okay, and then it would say red, for instance. Okay, so Michael's hair color is red. That's that's. Oops, we should put a pair of parentheses right right there. All right. So for instance, if we said Jim dot nationality, basically it would be Jim's nationality. It's the same as if you'd said that in English. 
we use a dot to, so you don't actually put that single quote right there, okay? Um, you don't put that in, um, in, in Java. Okay, but this is just sort of the English equivalent. So we use a dot to invoke any of its mutator methods as well in order to change values of its attributes. So for instance, you could do something like this, Jim dot change nationality, and then you put in a string right here, okay, we'll change the nationality of, uh, the nationality, nationality attribute of the object Jim. We can use a dot to invoke accessor methods in order to use the result of some computation on its attribute values. Okay, so the get BMI is an example of that. So Jim dot, so this would be like saying, can I, um, can I get Jim's BMI? Okay, so this would be based on Jim's weight and height. Okay, so these would be internal inside of the Jim uh, object. Okay, and then we can return values of an accessor method, and these are stored inside of a variable uh, on the left-hand side of a, uh, an equal sign or an uh, assignment operator. Okay, so you could do it like this as well. Double Jim BMI is equal to Jim dot get BMI. And then we would put a semicolon right there. All right, so, so here's some examples right here. So we got point P1, uh, new point 34, like that. We have system out dot print line, like that. P1, get distance from origin, right there. There's a method right there. Here's another method right here. P1 dot move up to, okay, you can see that. And P2, like that. System dot out dot print line. And then we have an object right here and a method right there inside of the parentheses like that. So these two right here create two different instances of point. So that's the class, that's the class. P1 is an object, P2 is an object. We have new, meaning we ha we're using a constructor. And then we have point three, four, point negative six, negative eight. Okay, so that's the constructor call right there. That's the constructor call right there. It will construct an object P1 it will construct an object P2. Okay, with the at, with, with values, okay, uh, for the def sorry, for the definition of P1 and P2 of three and four there, and negative six and negative eight, these would be like the X and Y locations of P1 and P2. Okay, that's inside of the constructor right there to initialize P1 and P2. Lines three and four, we're invoking the same accessor method on two different instances, and we're gonna return distinct values. So here we're gonna be printing stuff out. So we're gonna use the system.out.print line right there and there. We're gonna be calling on P1 object and P2 object, and we're gonna be asking for the distance from origin, say right after the, the construction, using the constructor, okay? So we'd be able to get those values and print them out immediately. And very likely, well, as you can see right here, three and four, negative six, negative eight, the, um, the, the values for get distance from origin will be distinct for these two different objects, but they don't have to be, but often they are. Lines five and six, we're invoking the same mutator. Okay, so we were doing accessors before, now we're doing mutators, so we're gonna change things. So we're gonna mutate, we're gonna change on two different instances. Um, and so here we've got P1 and P2, so two different objects, we're going to move P1 up by a value of two. We're gonna move P2 up by a val value of two right there. But because we started at two different positions of X and Y, the end result for P1 and P2 will be different in this case. So generally speaking, um, when, when you modify an object using, or two different objects using the same method call like that, the end result will be different for both of these objects. So they really work independently of one another. Lines three and seven, there and there. We're accessing the same uh, accessor method on the same instance. Let's see, here we go. But they may return distinct values. Okay, so yeah, actually right here we do. So we've got system out print line P1 System dot uh, print line p1 asking for the get distance from origin. Well, if we set up this sequence right here, and what we had right here was, uh, let's see, we did p1, we had a constructor right here. Then afterwards, we printed out the value. We would get some 
distance from origin based on squaring 3 and squaring 4 and doing the square root of that. Then we move up to, so we change the x value from 3 to 5, and then we do the square root of, uh, let's see, that'll be 5 squared plus 4 squared. The printed value right here would be very likely different, well, if the, the calculations were different. So if we did uh, for the distance here in this case, and the distance right here, square root of 5 squared plus 4 squared, in that case, we would have distinct values, okay? All right, and there you go. So another discussion about methods. Mm -hmm.